All right, in this lecture, we're going to go ahead and download server 2012. So I'm going to go ahead and start Internet Explorer. Okay, and we're just going to search for, uh, let's see, Windows Server 2012, and we'll just do R2 download. Okay, and it says right here, try Windows Server 2012 R2. Okay, we'll click there. All right, so it brought us straight down to it. It's pretty smart. The website's pretty smart. So it dropped us right down to server 2012 R2. There's a 180 day evaluation download that's available for free. Now you just need to register. That's it. So I've already registered. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. So I will drag this off screen. That way there's no personal data exposed. Okay, so I've went ahead and logged in. Now we're going to want to choose the ISO as the file type. So we're going to say register to continue. Okay, and I'm just going to leave all this blank so you can't see any of this information. I'm just I'm going to click continue. Okay, just keep clicking continue through the screens. Click that again. Am I not filling something out? No, okay, this is just slow. All right, so we're gonna go for this long file name down here at the bottom, okay? It's the wind blue refresh, uh, you know, 143.17, blah, 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 okay? So it's 64 bit, so we're gonna go ahead and click download. And it's 4.22 gigabytes, and we're gonna click save, okay? All right, and now we're going to wait for this to download. All right, so the download is completely finished. Now I am storing it on a, ex uh, not an external, but a second hard drive. So I'm not going to drag it to my desktop. So here's the file. It's completely downloaded, 4.22 gigabytes, and we are ready to start installing Server 2012. So I will see you in the next lecture. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to install Windows Server 2012. So the first thing we need to do uh, is power on the virtual machine and you can see right here we already have the ISO mounted so we'll go ahead right click and say start normal start okay the VM window appears here now we can do right control and F and that'll bring up full screen on a virtual machine now we're doing English US United States click next we'll select install now Okay, so let's expand this and take a look at what our options are here. Now, like I said before, it's all 64-bit for Windows Server. Now, we can install server core installation or server with the GUI and their standard and data center. Uh, basically, the difference is how many licenses you can apply. Uh, it's basically purchase and volume options. Uh, we're just going to pick data center and we're going to do server with a GUI. Now, server core does not come with all, I like pretty obvious, it doesn't come with all the GUI options. So it runs faster and it Microsoft's really pushing sysadmins to code, kind of go this way and manage the server cores from one server with a GUI. So you'll have maybe five Windows servers and four of them will be server core and then one will be server with a GUI. You manage the four servers with a core from the one server that you have with a GUI. That's where they're pushing the the kind of direction. If you take uh, the MCSA exam, you'll find this that that's what they're recommending. But uh, we're just going to do server with a GUI and click next. Okay, accept the license terms. Now we're going to select custom and we're going to install Windows only. And it says advanced. I don't really know why it says that. Um, the other option is to upgrade and we don't have anything installed so we have to choose custom. Now we're going to choose drive zero and we don't have anything on here. You can see it's got free 25 gigabytes. If there was data on here, we could click format and just wipe out the data, but uh, we don't need to do any of that. So we'll go ahead and click next. Now we just need to wait for Windows Server to finish its installation. All right, so this is where we're gonna set the password for the local administrator account. Now you can see the username there is administrator. It's not admin, it's full, fully spelled administrator. And I'm gonna go ahead and create my password. You might wanna write this down or use a password that you remember, because if you forget it, you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble. You have to rebuild or reinstall Windows. So I'm gonna click finish. All right, 
So now we can log in. So on VirtualBox, if I hit right control and delete, it's the same as pressing control delete. If I actually press control delete, it'll lock my Windows host. So or it won't lock it, it'll bring up the uh, task screen. So I'm gonna log in with the password I just created. All right, so we're prompted about this network. Uh, do you wanna find PCs, devices, content on this network? I'm just gonna say yes, I don't really care. Okay, and now we have server manager. We'll go into more detail on this later. So what we want to do now is go ahead and pop out of full screen mode and we need to install the VirtualBox tools. So the way you do that is click on devices and click insert guest additions CD image. Okay, so we're going to scroll down. All right, and here's the disk. We'll pop this open and then we'll select next. Install. And this allows things like copying from one computer from your host into the VM, uh, clipboard sharing, and things like that. And also drag and drop onto the desktop. Okay, so it wants us to reboot. We'll just say we'll reboot later. All right, so we'll close out of that. And we are all done with this lecture. We have Server 2012 installed. We've installed the guest editions. And that's it for this lecture. So I will see you guys in the next lecture. All right, so in this lecture, I'm gonna teach you how to rename your server. So let's right click on the server and we're gonna click start and normal start. So now that it's powered on, I'm gonna hit right control and hit F and that'll bring it into full screen mode. And I have server manager here. So if you don't see server manager, you can click down here on the left and pop it up. Also make sure you're on the local server tab on the left and not under the dashboard. Otherwise you won't see this information. And right here under computer name, I'm going to click on this little blue text here. Okay, so I'm going to drag this in the middle of the screen so I can see what's going on. Now we can see the full computer name is this Windows and then some random string. And then we can see the work group. Now I'm going to click change. And here you can set it to be a member of a domain if you've set up a domain on your local network. Or you can set it to a work group. If you haven't set up a domain or you don't know what a domain is and you don't want to set it to this setting, although it's really, it would be good for you to look into how to set up a domain and uh, that'd be really valuable experience. So you might want to chase that, chase that down. Uh, I teach a course on that, uh, by the way, if you want to look into it or learn more about it. So under the computer name, I'm going to change it to just T serve and I'm just going to call it 2012. So stands for test server 2012 something I just made up you can make up whatever you want generally in enterprise environments I see server names being named after the airport code uh, whatever role they're taking on so if it's a domain controller it'll be named like DC 101 or if it's an update server it might be called US 101 or something like that so I'm gonna go with tserve 2012 so I know it's a 2012 server and I know it's a test server okay so I'm gonna click OK Okay, it's gonna ask me to restart. I'm gonna click close and then I'll be prompted to restart. So I'm gonna say restart now. Okay, so let's log back in and let's make sure that it changed the computer name. Okay, so it's booting up. Here comes server manager. Now let's click on local server. And here we can see computer name is tserve2012. All right, so that wraps up this lecture. Great job, and I'll see you in the next one.